You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, guys. It's red hot and ready time again, and we're going down south. That's right, man. We're going down to the islands. We go to Jamaica, Barbados, man. Then we may head over to Trinidad and Tobago. What we do there? We pull the plantain from the tree. We pull the pork. We jerk the pork. We make it the jerk spice. And I'm going to be diving into the carefree nature of the Caribbean culture. True that, man. It's all about the culture. The culture, man. We be heading downtown to taste some brown sugar, and it's going to be sweet, man. To the grill! Thank you very much, gentlemen, for flying Paradise Airways to the island of Jamaica. Please enjoy your stay, and remember, there are dogs at the airport. Okay, moving right along, guys. We're in Jamaica right now. We're making jerk pork. So what the hell is jerk pork, anyway? I gotta tell you, it doesn't matter what the hell it is. All you gotta know is that it's fantastically flavorful, sexy, smooth, spicy, sweet, smoky goodness, okay? And this is how you make it. You got your pork, okay? And then you jerk it. Oh, yeah. Get your minds out of the gutters, let's get back to the spice, okay? This is all spice. This is Jamaican peppercorn, also known as pimento down in the islands. It's a dried berry that smells a hell of a lot like Christmas cookies. Hmm, you got that? Smell that. What does it smell like? Christmas. Cookies. Right. We got ourselves the allspice, a couple tablespoons of that ground up. We got some parsley, that's about a quarter cup. We got some cinnamon, that's about half a tablespoon, two teaspoons, that's in there. This also grows in abundance in the islands as well. All these flavors are very, very much Caribbean. We got ourselves four or five cloves of garlic. We got ourselves about three quarters of a cup of chopped scallion or green onion, okay? All this stuff grows down there. It's a very agricultural society. And we got soya sauce, which, okay, okay, it sounds Chinese. Well, don't look at me like that, it is. Okay, moving along, we got some onion. Just gonna chop that up roughly because this is all going to be pureed in just a minute. And I'm saving the best ingredient for last. And this is the Scotch Bonnet Pepper, man. Take a look at this. These little lantern-like devices are hotter than a lantern, man. You put these in your mouth, you got 250 to 300,000 Scoville units, and that is about 10 or 20 times as hot as a jalapeno pepper, each one of them. If you don't want a hot, you take the seeds out. We do want a hot, so we're not taking the seeds out. You just run your finger over that, if you don't believe me. Put it on your tongue. Yowza. Flavor is amazing, the heat intense, so enjoy the first flavor, because that's the last time you're going to be able to taste anything for a couple days. Definitely wicked. And toss a little bit of fresh thyme in here, and a little more garlic, because <laughs> that's the way I like it. Oh yeah. Toss in your food processor. Make sure you get all that allspice in there. Very good. Put our lid on, give it a little process, right? We're going to take it down to a paste consistency. And in addition to what we've already put in there, we're going to add a little bit of oil. This is going to help it blend up a little bit better. Not too much, otherwise it's not going to stick to the meat properly. And I need a member of the studio audience here to come in and test this. Hmm, who could that be? Um, cracker? Why don't you try this out? Okay. Is it true you're a Rastafarian? It is true. A Rastafarian separatist? Yes. There we are. Give it a little taste. See what you think. That's nice. Thanks, man. Okay, when we come back, Cracker and I will be jerking up our pork till we can't take no more. The Caribbean, a word that conjures up images of palm trees, exotic women, and fresh food cooked up on the beach. Today we're showing you how to make a mini stove that you can cart off to the beach with you. So stick around because we're getting cooking, island style. This has absolutely nothing to do with jerking pork, but it feels really good, man. 
Okay, I'm lonely. We got three tablespoons of jerk spice, we got a little more soy sauce, and we got about five cloves of garlic chopped up. That's actually about three cloves of garlic. We'll call it five for now. If you got five at home, use five. If you got three, use three. If you got two, well, borrow one, okay? And we got a quarter cup of vegetable oil and a little bit of coarse salt, not too much, okay? And you just rub this all over it. This is the actual jerking portion of our program. Oh, that's not what I do best. You're gonna let that sit in the fridge for as long as possible. If you have plans, you know, to do this on the weekend, start on Wednesday, put it in the fridge on Wednesday, let all this stuff soak right into the meat. You know, you don't wanna do it any more than three or four days in advance, but if you got 12 hours, that'll work too. This is just good. A little bit of oil in here, just enough to saute your onions. Gonna toss that straight in. Sorry, Dean. Got a little cilantro. That's just about a quarter cup of leaves. And then we're gonna chop it up fairly fine here. Throw that in. That's gonna extract some of the flavor out of that as it sautés. Okay, grab yourself a wooden spoon. Just give it a little turn here. At this point, a little salt helps out too, right? Coarse or fine, doesn't matter. About a half a teaspoon. That's gonna draw some of that nice flavor as well. You know, it's also gonna make the onions sweat a little bit faster. And they're almost there now. So, you know, take this. This is some Jamaican rum, Jamaican coconut flavored rum. You know, put that in the pot. Don't worry about flambéing it. You know, the, the fact that we're gonna be reducing it a little bit is gonna take most of the alcohol out of it. Very, very Jamaican kind of taste. Further to that, we got some honey. This is gonna sweeten it up even more. It's also gonna enable it when this reduces down to really stick, to really adhere to the pork that we got going on the grill. See the spice there, that, that jerk spice that we made, the marinade and the rub, it's not terribly sweet, it's a very savory flavor. So this is gonna be a nice counterbalance to that. Okay, just get that incorporated. You take about two cups of water, let this rip, and tell you, man, the guys at the Haile Selassie International Blunt Rolling and Limbo Picnics. Oh, they're going to eat this up. Ja, love, peace, out. Today what we are doing is building a stove that you can use on the beach because you got tossed out of your hotel, you blew all your money in the casino, and you are now sleeping next to the dumpster. So with a little rifling through your average dumpster, you could probably come up with most of the stuff that you need here. This is what we're going to use for fuel. This is paraffin wax. You can probably find some uh, thrown out candles behind a hotel. We're just going to drop this in our double boiler here. If you can't find a double boiler, you can cook it directly, but it, uh, it's better if you use a double boiler because you won't set yourself on fire quite as easily. Next, we have your basic tin can. Corn probably came in it. You won't have any trouble finding one of those. We are going to fill that with a roll of cardboard. We're going to cut up a strip of cardboard. That's tough stuff. Just work your way through it. Okay. Cut that off. We are going to roll it up tightly until it's as big around as the can is around. Now, I'm going to jam that down in the can. Great. Now we are ready for our fuel. Now, that wax is hot and will stick to you, so grab a glove or something, you know, an old diaper that you found in the trash can. And we're just going to carefully pour that into the cardboard. It doesn't matter if you spill a little bit. The wax burns because it's a petroleum product. It's similar to other oils. It's just an oil that is actually solid at room temperature. We have enough wax in there. Now the next thing we're going to do is make the outer part of the stove. First off, I'm going to use the handy dandy can opener. You'll have to use a sharp stone or something like that again out back of the hotel. Okay. Throw that away, you won't be using that top part. We're gonna use hammer and nail and our hammer and screwdriver and knock some holes in here so the heat can get up to the pan. Turn those open a little bit, open them up. Probably about seven or eight holes would be enough. And lastly for this part, we're gonna cut a couple of windows into the side of the tin can at the bottom. Again, this lets air into the fire. Air will come in here and the exhaust will travel out the top. Hopefully.
Now, basically, we are ready. We're gonna light this baby on fire. Sometimes it takes a second the first time because it's a little densely packed with wax on the top. And now you're ready to cook. Isn't that beautiful? It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. All right, check this out. We got some heat. We're smoking it up here. We're sizzling it up a nice fish we found on the beach. Isn't this the life? You got the sand, you got your cooking facilities. Forget the ticket home. Let's just start selling trinkets to the tourists. So what do you want to know about jerking your pork? I'll tell you what you need to know, OK? First thing, open your barbecue, because that's where it's going. We got our lovely marinated pork loin here, right? We shoved it up inside. We did a little dance with it. You know, it's tasting mighty fine now. And it's going to taste mighty fine later on as well. OK, let's throw this straight on. OK, we got that in direct heat right now. We're going to start this off at a fairly high temperature. What we hope to achieve by that is getting a little bit of color on this baby. You know, move it around, get some nice grill marks, and then we're going to slide it over to this end of the grill. And at that end of the grill, we're not going to have very much heat at all, okay? So it's going to be cooking indirectly. A little bit of salt on this puppy. We'll basically ignore that. What do we want to have to eat with our jerk pork, okay? I figure we need a little bit of corn, okay? We're going to jerk it. Oh, you can jerk it if you like. You'd know all about that cracker, wouldn't you? It's not something I'd like to get into. Chances are, that's going to get you in a whole world of trouble. So we're going to pull off this, pull off the husks. Snap it off of the base, make sure all the silk is gone. Do this with one more, because really there's only enough pork there for two people, so one cob per person should be plenty, plenty of corn. Okay, grab yourself some kind of tray, sort of like this one if you got one. Put a little oil in there. Toss in your corn, making sure you have all that silk off it. Toss it in, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of salt, a little cracked black pepper. And as simple as that, man. We're not trying to spice this right up, okay? Because we already got enough spice happening in this, and we're gonna have some spice in the mango salsa that we're making as well. So we need something to sort of take the heat off, right? Cool you down a bit, something to give you the break between jerking. You are so, so, <laughs> so dirty. Throw that straight on as well. Once we finish eating all this fantastic stuff here, we're gonna want a little bit of dessert. Oh, that's my thoughts anyway. You guys can do whatever the hell you want, but I'm cooking dessert. Plantain, okay, this is a member of the banana family. I knew it looked familiar. Normally you eat these as a starch, like as a substitute to potatoes or rice, that kind of thing. It's a starch conspiracy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a chocolate sauce for these things, but not now, we gotta cook them first. We're gonna throw them on whole, Hole in the skins, okay? The skins are gonna get nice and dark brown and that sort of thing, but at the end, we'll peel those right off, and the fruit inside is gonna be beautiful. Be... Sauce for the pork, okay? We need something a little bit fruity, right? We got all those spices going on. We got the sweet happening from this glaze that we're gonna be putting on a little later on. So I figure we need something really fresh, lively, something to wake up the taste buds after all those spices have attacked them, right? So take your mango, slice it down around the pit. Take a look at the pit in this thing. It takes up so much room. Some varieties of mangoes are worse for this than others. This is pretty good. Very nice mango. I'm not sure where it's from. It might be South America. Lots of flesh. I'm gonna show you how to get the flesh out of it. Mango's got a very thick skin, okay? So you run your knife through the flesh just until you touch the skin on the other side, the tip of your knife. Going across now, about half inch size. Now just force it back. Look, all these things open right up. Take your knife and shave them off. Okay, hey, Cracker, why don't you try this over here? Try a little bit of that mango and then taste the, uh, taste the rind there you're in too. Tell me what you think about that. That's nice. <laughs> Did you like the rind as well? Because most people don't. Not so much. <laughs> oh man, you're good, you're good. Let's get this into the bowl. And this is a very simple sauce. I mean, you can dress it up as much as you like because I'm the barbecue master. That's sweet red pepper. That's about half sweet red pepper. We got some cilantro here, a couple tablespoons of leaves. We're gonna chop that up a little finer. Just like that, okay? It doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be smaller. Into the bowl, 
little salt. We got the juice and zest of two limes. Give that acidity. The acidity is going to bring out the flavor, the natural flavor of the vegetables as well. Or pardon me, the natural flavors of the fruit, right? And we got one hot pepper here. This is like a cayenne pepper. These also grow down south, Jamaica. It's not as hot as that scotch bonnet, thank God, man, because that is a killer. I'm still feeling that. How about you, Cracker? What do you think of that? That's pretty damn hot, wasn't it? Real hot. How hot? Real hot. That's right. Cracker knows. Okay, this is a completed salsa. Very simple, but very tasty. Here, Robert, why don't you try a bit? Mmm, Robert Cam. Mm. He's a vegetarian. That's right, I'm screaming too. Very nice. Okay, it's about time to do a little turning of our pork. Look at that. That's got perfect color on there, okay? We're gonna season the side with a little bit of salt too. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move this straight over to the indirect heat side. I'm gonna start turning these things. See the way they're puffing up a bit, getting all dark? They have to get that way in order for the center to start cooking and releasing all the starch. Corn's looking good. Okay, I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna give it a little while, make sure there's no heat on the other side. Hot stuff. Not. I'm heading up into the Blue Mountains where I know a little piece of brown sugar that's gonna make me very happy. Okay, we are back and we're jerking it. Check this out, fellas, come on over. Our jerk pork is looking nice. We got about a, it's rare in the center. A little while left to go on this. It's at this time that I wanna introduce that smoking package I was telling you about. We got some fresh thyme, got some allspice berries. This is the whole berry of that spice I showed you earlier that went into the jerk rub, okay? A quick, short blast of smoke just to give a little bit of that smoky allspice flavoring on the front half. Okay, poke a few holes in this to allow the smoke to escape. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this directly on the coals on the hot part of the grill, okay? What I'll do is I'll lift this up and toss it straight in, right on the coals, okay? Though, let's put some of our glaze on that we made. See, we reduced this down by half, and it's got a nice syrupy texture. And that's gonna sweeten this up beautifully. That and the allspice smoke and the marinade, you won't believe the flavor of this thing. While we're at it, we'll check these. Just starting to get tender. They're like rocks when you first put them on. You can see the color now is changing completely. Okay, let's shut this down. Leave it alone for a few minutes and get working on our dessert. Okay, we've created a double boiler, and by that I mean a two-part cooking system. We've got boiling water under here. We put a bowl on top. That means whatever we cook in this bowl will not get above a temperature of 212 degrees. Okay, perfect. Let's throw our chocolate and cream in here simultaneously. You've got some bittersweet chocolate. You've got some heavy cream. That bittersweet chocolate is about a cup and a half. We got about a half a cup of cream. As this heats up, we're gonna stir it up, and it's gonna create a nice, nice creamy chocolate sauce, which we're gonna put on those plantains that we got roasted in there, right? But speaking about plantains, I told you that they're used as both a starch and a dessert, usually a starch. I'm gonna show you how to prepare it as a starch accompaniment. In other words, this is what we would eat as the potato or rice in our dish. Cut them in half, check this out, check the color and the texture, very, very hard. Very little moisture in it. I gotta get my hands on some of those. So we have to peel back the skin from this. Do it gently, because this is so hard, this thing will crack in half if you put too much pressure on it. So slide your thumb under, and gently remove the skin off the plantain. I had a doctor do this to me one time. Ow. Uh, I'm getting dizzy. But thinking about time, it's a very deep, complex issue, isn't it, really? Perhaps Graham has some words on it. Time traveling. So we got two each. A little bit of thyme. Jamaicans love thyme, by the way. And why not? Okay, there's some salt in there. Some fresh ground pepper. And a little bit of vegetable oil. Just enough to coat them, okay? Just toss them around a bit, make sure they're evenly coated, otherwise they're probably gonna stick to the grill. The sugars will start reacting. 
in the form of starch on the grill and it'll cause it to stick. This smoking package is just starting to go up a bit. I can smell it. I'm going to close this down. So in a few more minutes, this is going to be all done, ready to go. Okay, checking out our chocolate here. Our chocolate and our cream, it's looking good. Give a little stir, make sure it combines well. I've got a little bit of rum here. I can do it good in the morning. I'm going to add to this very slowly, okay? Because we do not want to seize up our chocolate. Especially if it's cold, adding it to a hot chocolate, your chocolate is going to go and you're going to have a chocolate bar instead of a chocolate sauce. Perfect. Oh, that's tasty, man. That's beautiful. Okay, this chocolate on the plantain, man, you are bound to see jaw tonight, man. This is so sweet. And speaking of sweet, hey, where is that little lady from Port Antonio I was telling you about? Man, I could use a little brown sugar right now. How embarrassing. Well, this looks really great, John, but are we having bananas for dessert and dinner? Actually, these aren't bananas, girls. These are the plantain. These are plantain. What's the difference? Uh, actually, the plantains, they're like a banana, same family, mm -hmm. except they're a lot starchier. They're like a potato almost, right? Except these ones are a little bit more ripe, so they have a little bit more sweetness in them because they've ripened up. So the sweetness is for dessert. That's right. We're putting some chocolate. Chocolates. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mm. But you know, really different. Forget about these, you know. I want to talk about my jerked pork. This is great. Is that what you've been doing all afternoon? I've been jerking my pork all afternoon. Well, I hope you at least washed your hands. How do you think we made the sauce? Oh, nasty. That's funny. Would you like to try a slice? Mm. It's very sweet. Let me know how hot it is. Mmm, it's really sweet. It is sweet. You know, there's tons of glaze on there. That's why the wasps have been flying around here threatening us all day. Now, what's in the glaze? Uh, we got uh, we got honey, we got coconut rum, we got, oh man, it's, we got a whole lot of stuff. It's all about Jamaica, it's all about the islands, it's all about us being red hot and ready man. And the home of Smoky Good Eats. <laughs>